Hello guys, welcome to another video. My name is Keith and today I thought I'd do something just a little bit different. I thought I would give you my top 10 tips on how to stay warm this winter. Now, there's, there might be little things that you already do and there might be some that you've not thought of doing yet. So I thought it's worth a go, it's worth a shot. Try and help someone out there this winter. It's getting cold in the UK and it possibly is in other parts of the world as well. So if you enjoy the video, please leave a like. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe. And if you have any tips that I've missed, then add them in the comment section below. Right, so for me, number one is probably my thermal suit, you know, two-piece thermal suit or long johns. You can get them from pretty much everywhere. You can get them from supermarkets, camping shops, shooting, you know, hunting shops and fishing shops as well. And the reason I like to use them is because they make you feel comfortable. They are tied to your skin, so they instantly make you feel warmer. And also, if you're camping, or fishing, night fishing, it's something that's really, really good to strip down to when you're about to get into your sleeping bag because it makes you feel more comfortable and it's cozier all around. And there's nothing better than being cozy when you're fishing. Number two has got to be hats, gloves, and proper socks. Now, hat, because that is where you lose, your head is where you lose most of your body temperature. You know, your blood is rushing around, your body's heating up, and as it moves up your body, if you ain't got a hat on, the, the heat from your body is just going to release. So keep, having a hat on keeps it in, it keeps you comfortable and warm again. And then it's same with your proper socks, really. If you're out fishing, I don't know about you, but me, if I'm out fishing, and the moment my feet start to get cold and my toes start to get numb and you can't feel them, then that is kind of a, a sign to call it a day and go warm for me. So having proper socks is so important and same again with gloves. If, you, if your hands are starting to get numb, it is so uncomfortable and that is just not what you want when you're doing something that you enjoy. Number three links back to the proper socks and it is waterproof boots or shoes. Now same again, it can be quite damp out there in the winter months and if you get your feet wet, it is going to make you even worse. Your feet are going to get numb all the time, constantly. If you ain't got a change of shoes, a change of socks, then you're probably not going to fight it back. So it is game over. So having waterproof shoes, boots, wellies, and proper socks is a winner. And you're going to you're going to extend the time on the bank by being super careful and comfortable. Number four is a big one for me, and it is a proper sleeping bag. Now, you might be like me, you might not, but personally, I always begrudged buying a really expensive sleeping bag. I thought it was a bit of a rip-off. These are my younger, younger years, obviously, um, but I thought it was a bit of a rip-off. I thought because it's got a name on it, they can charge me X amount of pounds, but it's actually not, and I've properly tested different sleeping bags. Owning a tackle shop, I've been able to, uh, I had a, a, a pretty rubbish sleeping bag to begin with and then I came across a Nash one. Now this is not a promotion for Nash because Trackadurum, Fox, Nash, um, you know there's quite a few that do them. Avid do one, Who's, who else does one? Aqua I think do one, Cyprinus do one, there's quite a, you know, a few good ones but I, I happened to come across a Nash one and oh my god I was too hot, it was about five degrees at night, which is pretty cold. I know it's not major cold, but you, you feel the difference. I could feel the difference in the Nash sleeping bag compared to my old sleeping bag in warmer temperatures. So it shows you the difference. Now number five is something that I hadn't always thought about. And it's quite simple. People see it as kind of a childy kind of thing. You know, kids mostly use them, but it is a blessing to your fishing trip or camping trip, and it is a hot water bottle. Now, a hot water bottle obviously requires hot water to use, and what do most campers and anglers have when they're out on the bank? We have a gas stove and we have a kettle with endless supplies of water. So no matter whether it's the daytime, the nighttime, your water bottle's gone cold, it doesn't matter because you can boil that kettle, you can boil that water and you can reheat it up. And it's just a winner. Keep it in your sleeping bag before you go to sleep at night. You can put it into your, into your clothing. You can 
God, you can take your shoes off and put your feet on it while you're waiting for that fish or, you know, if you're in your tent camping and waiting to go hiking after the weather's calmed down a bit. You know, there's, there's various different things you can use a hot water bottle for and I would now, honestly, never leave home without one. Number six is a proper ground sheet for your bivet or your tent and an underlayer for your bed chair. And first off, the ground sheet, you know, you can get really thick ground sheets, you can get really cheap and thin, bad quality ground sheets. Now, if you have got one of them thin ones, although they are good and better than not having one because they keep the mud out, they keep the wet out, they're just, they're letting the damp in. Now, damp also rises, so they're letting the damp in and by having a heavy duty ground sheet, you can, you know, you've got a better chance of keeping the damp out. It's just, it's keeping you warmer because it's that little bit of an extra layer and it's just overall a must. Now, that's also why you should have an underlayer under your bed. Now, you can do this a couple of different ways. On your bed chair, either have an extra layer before your bag or your mattress, or you can get from, I know Tracker do one, if you turn the bed around, you, it goes on the under layer of your bed. So when the damp rises, it hits that layer first, not straight onto the bottom of your bed and then to come through that onto your mattress through to the sleeping bag. It just, it keeps you warmer, it guarantees a better night's sleep and I'd say, well, the ground sheet is a must have, but if you can, get that under layer. Now number seven is take all your clothes off at night down to your thermal suit, your long johns or your pajamas if you've got any. And that again is so important due to the layers because when you get in your sleeping bag, if I've got two jumpers and my coat on and then I've got my pants, my waterproof pants and then my thermal suit, when you're in them, them layers of the bed, they've got to not only warm you up or warm the bed up, but they've got to warm the different layers of the bed up and then they've got to warm the different layers of you up and if you're down to one layer you get warmer so much quicker and you stay warmer. Number eight is spur clothes again you can get wet quite easily you can feel damp in the mornings and if you've got that spur clothes to change into whether it be in your car or you have a spur clothes bag, you're just giving yourself a better chance of staying out on the bank longer or camping longer. And again, it's a must because if you did if you did get wet and you've only just got to the place that you're fishing or camping, then it allows you to stay there and complete your session, not have to go on because you can't cope with the dampness, the numbness and the coldness. So always take a spur change of clothes, guys. Number nine is pretty obvious, which is hot drinks and hot foods. Now you can pick your foods and your drinks as well to make you feel that little bit more warmer. And that is by doing, you know, spicy foods or a pot noodle and adding some spices in it, you know, soups and adding spices and peppers in it. Uh, if you're old enough, don't do this if you're too young, but if you're drinking coffee, adding a bit of whiskey or brandy, that warms the stomach up perfectly and soups usually do anyway so they're pretty good i always take pot noodles i always add a bit of bob rill in um, or a, a chicken stock cube or something like that just to give it a bit more taste and it does it does make a difference it does make you feel much warmer inside number 10 is again a, a kind of obvious one but it's so important to be conscious of it when you when you're out fishing now it's very easy when, I, when I'm fishing to just stay sat down watching my rods and just watch what's going on. Now you can do exactly the same thing as that but by being stood up. So during the day I recommend always to walk around, watch the water, look for different signs of fish, you know, think of ideas and think of new rigs, you know, you can even make them by moving your hands and constantly being active and being concentrated on something else you're taking your focus away of away from being cold again at night time if you can if you're not going to sleep yet be active listen out for fish make some rigs with your head torch cook some food just by staying active you're just guaranteeing that you're going to have a more enjoyable time on the bank now that's it guys 
like I said, they you know some of them are pretty obvious, and you may already be doing these, but I just thought they're worth sharing. If there's anybody out there searching it or anybody struggling because they're afraid to go out due to the cold and they've come across this, they might then get the confidence to still go out and fish, and everybody should be able to fish. So thank you for watching. Again, leave a like if you enjoy, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you in another video soon.